Matt Reeves' The Batman Universe has received a brilliant continuation with the ongoing The Penguin series, which chronicles the titular scheme master's cunning plan of instigating a gang war in Gotham by pitting the rivaling crime families, Maronis and Falcons, against each other to secure the high seat of Gotham's underworld for himself. Sophia Falcon, her troubled psyche, her identity as a serial killer, and the dysfunctional relationship she shares with her family members have turned out to be one of the major highlights of the series. Viewers who are acquainted with Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale's The Long Halloween will surely recognize some key plot points the TV series draws from the iconic comic series, where the rivalry between the Maronis and Falcons entered into uncharted territory with the emergence of a serial killer. As the TV series has reached the midpoint of its first season, it seems like more allusions, references, and thematic similarities to the comics will prominently feature in the final four episodes as well. Which is why I will try to break down the key events from Batman The Long Halloween comics to highlight the possible way the first season of The Penguin might wrap up. Before we continue, a spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the comics. So if you've read them already, let's dive straight into the video. While you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel as it helps us a lot. Holiday Killer Strikes Just like some of the best Batman comics, the Long Halloween focuses more on Bruce Wayne compared to his caped crusader alter ego, and from the very beginning of the first issue, a strong influence of the Godfather movie series can be noticed in the narrative progression. Bruce's father, Thomas Wayne, had saved the dreaded kingpin Carmine the Roman Falcon's life, prompting Bruce to unwittingly end up connected with the mob boss. Carmine tries to pursue Bruce to assist him in laundering his money through Gotham City Bank, which Bruce refuses to help him with, and later, forcing bank president Richard Daniel Batman ensures Falcon's blood money stays out of the bank. Richard is assassinated by Carmine's nephew Johnny Vitti, who himself ends up as the first victim of a new serial killer in Gotham City during Halloween. The killer is later named by the media as a holiday killer after his tendency to assassinate his targets on specific holidays comes to light. Initially, Falcon family members and people under their payroll are hunted by the unknown killer, prompting Carmine and his lackeys to consider the rival Moroni family to be behind the attacks. However, the killer shifts their attention to the Moronis as well, beginning with the death of Luigi Moroni, father of Salvador Moroni, making both crime families their target. Soon enough, the notorious supervillains of Gotham, Poison Ivy, Joker, Catwoman, Riddler, and even Solomon Grundy get embroiled in this mess, with no one, including the investigating duo, Batman and Commissioner Jim Corden, having any clue regarding the identity of the holiday killer. For Joker, an enigmatic serial killer taking the limelight away from him feels like an insult, while Ivy works under Carmine's payroll to entrap Bruce Wayne in her charm. Selina and her alter ego Catwoman engage in a cat and mouse game with Bruce and Batman, occasionally assisting him in the investigation, while Riddler, a genius mastermind himself, becomes invested in finding out the true identity of Holiday Killer. Months ago before the killing started, Carmine had targeted his nephew, Johnny Vitti, as he was going to testify against him in court. However, as Johnny ended up changing his mind at the last moment, Carmine decided to spare his life. However, after Johnny's death, his mother, Carla Vitti, chief of the Chicago underworld, starts suspecting Carmine's influence in getting her son killed, prompting a family civil war in the process. The angle of Johnny Vitti's betrayal was highlighted differently in the Penguin series, where his affair with Luca Falcon's wife becomes a vital plot point. Dent Family Crisis the Long Halloween functions as much as a Harvey Dent story as it does a Batman narrative. The story almost acts as a spiritual successor to Frank Miller's seminal Batman classic, Batman Year One. As Straight Arrow, Tough as Nails DA of Gotham City, Harvey Dent gets introduced to Batman through Gordon as the trio makes an effort to dismantle Carmine's criminal empire and getting tangled in the serial killer investigation in the process. Harvey's wife Gilda feels exasperated by her husband's workaholic tendencies and wants him to settle down and try to have a child and raise a family. Trouble follows as Carmine sends hitmen to kill the dents after Harvey and Bats burn down millions of his blood money. However, Harvey and Gilda survive the assassination attempt. Joker pays a visit to the Dent household as well, brutalizing Harvey before leaving, much to Gilda's horror. You have to keep in mind that this version of Harvey doesn't come from wealth, had a rough childhood, and at present, as he is hell-bent to uphold justice by the books, Gotham's despicable criminal elements test his psyche. At one point, Harvey suspects Bruce after Thomas Wayne's history with Carmine is brought to light, resulting in Bruce standing trial. But Alfred ends up saving Bruce by pointing out the glaring incompetence of Gotham's administrative and judicial system during the period. 
Harvey becomes obsessed with the holiday killer, Gotham's dreaded baddies, and the Falcon investigation, ignoring his wife in the process and becoming more like his own abusive father by the day while losing his mental peace. Gilda sighs in regret seeing their family friends, James and Barbara Gordon, enjoying being parents to their newborn and being able to keep their family bond strong despite living in the same cesspool the dents do. Falcon Siblings Carmine's sharp, neurotic, perceptive son, Alberto Falcon, comes into focus right from the first issue, whose relationship with his father becomes a highlight of the Falcon family story arc. Carmine cares for Alberto and wants him to stay out of the family business for his own good, but Alberto seems to be too eager to prove himself to his father. On New Year's Eve, Alberto is killed at the hands of the holiday killer and is thrown out of a luxury cruise. To find and apprehend the holiday killer, Carmine brings his daughter, Sophia Falcon, out of Arkham, who uses her brawn to rattle a few cages in search of this new freak of Gotham. Sophia's troubling relationship with her father comes to light, as Carmine seems to harbor a disapproving mindset towards her, while all Sophia wants is a gesture of love or affection from her father. Unlike the Penguin series version of Alberto, who seems like an easygoing spoiled brat stereotype so far who doesn't meddle too much with Carmine's business, in the comics, Alberto is portrayed to be much more pragmatic, curious, and intelligent, determined to win his father's approval. However, being the youngest son, Alberto was often neglected by Carmine, and in a twisted way to prove his worth, he made a reputation as the holiday killer, becoming even more of a notorious presence in Gotham compared to his own father. On the other hand, Sophia Falcon's portrayal in The Penguin somewhat differs from her comics counterpart, but there are definite similarities as well. Her initial attempts to win Carmine's approval are similar in both portrayals, but whereas in comics, she entered into the world of crime driven by her own will, the series showcases her betrayal from family ended up thrusting her into a life she wanted to consciously avoid. Point to be noted that although Carla Vidi is portrayed having different relationships in comics and the series, in both cases, she and Sophia used to have a strong bond with each other. The fact that both Falcon siblings were undermined and occasionally pushed aside by Carmine's lackeys remains constant in both versions. Holiday Killers After his father's death, Sal Maroney approaches Dent to testify against Falcon in the court. But with the help of Dent's assistant, Vernon Fields, he sneaks acid into the trial and throws it at Harvey. Sal awakens Harvey's brutal, sadistic, psychopathic alter ego, Two-Face, by doing so. As Two-Face goes on the run and releases the dreaded criminals of Arkham, Batman seeks help from Calendar Man, who reveals the holiday killer will try to attack Sal Maroney next. Staging a prison transfer, Batman and Gordon are able to capture the holiday killer at long last, who is revealed to be none other than Alberto Falcon himself, who had previously faked his death and, in order to gain respect from his father, went on this year-long manic killing spree. Sal Maroney becomes the final victim of the holiday killer, but there's more to that story. Completely giving in to his two-face persona, Dent, now assisted by Joker, Ivy, Grundy, Penguin, Scarecrow, and Mad Hatter, ends up attacking Sophia and Carmine in the Falcon penthouse and gets interrupted by Batman and Catwoman in the process. In the end, Harvey manages to go scot-free after killing Falcon and kills Vernon Fields as well becoming the second holiday killer in a sense. Dent surrenders to Gordon and Batman, while Sophia is seemingly killed after taking a fall while having a scuffle with Catwoman. However, the best twist is left for the end, as, distraught after Harvey gets imprisoned, a pensive Gilda burns the evidence, and as she speaks to herself, it is revealed that she was the original holiday killer, who started killing Falcon associates with the hopes of taking Harvey's mind away from the grueling investigation procedure that was taking its toll on him. She killed the first few victims and strongly believes that Harvey was inspired by her actions as well and eliminated the scum of Gotham's underworld on his own while the credit was given to Alberto Falcon. The series ends with Gilda believing in Harvey's reformation. Sophia Falcon appears in the sequel series, Batman Dark Victory, where she is revealed to have survived the fall and become paraplegic. But in reality, Sophia was only pretending to be paralyzed while taking revenge for her father's murder by hanging cops to death thereby becoming the infamous Hangman Killer. Sophia ends up killing her brother Alberto as well and meets her end as Batman tries to stop her from killing Harvey Dent, only for Dent to put the bullet in her brain. In the Penguin series, the multiple serial killer and the Falcon family conspiracies might take shape in a different way in the remaining four episodes. As I suspect that the Hangman Killer was none other than Alberto Falcon. Carmine probably tried to keep his son from getting captured in order to let him ascend the throne of the Falcon crime family instead of Sophia thereby maintaining the patriarchal status quo of the family. If that proves to be the case, 
It will be interesting to see in the upcoming episodes of The Penguin how Sophia copes with the reality that her brother, the only person whom she trusted, ended up becoming the reason for her misery as well. Thank you for watching this video and do share your expectations for the remaining 4 episodes of The Penguin in the comment section below. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your daily dose of cinema and series. See you in the next one and for the time being we're signing off. Bye.